All right, here we go. What's wrong, honey? Fudge asked. My friend Mouse Ellis has chicken pox and can't come to Maine. Grandma put her arms around Sheila. You must be terribly disappointed. I am, Sheila wailed. Everything happens to me. Why does it have to be my friend who gets sick? Why couldn't Jimmy Fargo get chicken pox instead? Jimmy had chicken pox in second grade, I said. Don't you remember? We all had them. That made Sheila cry even harder. But it's so unfair. Where is it written that life is fair? Grandma asked. It's all ups and downs, isn't it, Buzzy? Buzzy Sr. nodded. These things happen, he told Sheila. That's when I burped. I didn't mean to. It just came out. Probably I drank my orange juice too fast. But Sheila glared at me. I heard that, Peter. Heard what? I asked. That laugh, she said. That was no laugh. That was a burp. Sheila turned to Buzzy Sr. Grandpa, make him stop. He's so mean. He's glad Mouse can't come to Maine. Before I had the chance to explain, Tootsie flicked a spoonful of oatmeal across the table. It landed on Sheila's face, halfway between her mouth and her eyes. You see, Sheila cried, you see how everything happens to me? It's just oatmeal, Grandma said, handing Sheila a piece of paper towel. That's not the point. Sheila turned and ran from the room. I sure hope things would improve before tonight when Jimmy Fargo gets here. After breakfast, Mom helped me get my room ready for Jimmy. She moved Fudge's things down the hall into the room Grandma was sharing with Tootsie. She set up a rollaway bed for Fudge right next to Tootsie's crib. I hate crowding you in like this, Mom said to Grandma. I don't mind, Grandma said. Sleeping in the same room as my grandchildren is a privilege. It's a lot more fun than sleeping in a room by myself. You should get married, Grandma, Grandma Fudge said. Then you wouldn't have to sleep in a room by yourself. He jumped on the rollaway bed. That bed isn't designed for jumping, Mom told him. It's going to collapse if you don't stop. Fudge tumbled off the bed like some Olympic gymnast and landed on his feet. If I tried if I tried that, I'd probably break a leg. Do you still snore, Grandma? He asked. Fudgy, Mom said. That's not a polite question. But Grandma didn't mind. She said, I really don't know, Fudge. You'll have to tell me. Snoring keeps the monsters away, he said. Yes, Grandma said. I'm sure it does. When I get married, I won't have monsters in my room, Fudge said. Says who, I asked. You don't get monsters when you sleep in a bed. That's why, that's why you want to get married, I said, so you won't get monsters in your room. Why else would I get married? You should talk to Mitzi, I told him. She's got monster spray. Monster spray? Mitzi's monster spray, I said in a deep voice, trying out my commercial, made from grandmother's secret formula. Spray twice a day and melt your monsters away. Really, Peter, Mom said. But Fudge liked the idea. He jumped back onto the rollaway bed and bounced up and down, singing, Monster spray melts your monsters away. Fudgy, Mom warned. But it was too late. Both ends of the rollaway bed sprang up, catching Fudge in the middle. I imagine the headline in tonight's paper. Five-year-old flattened by rollaway bed. Get me out of here, Fudge yelled. Okay, okay. Mom and Grandma held the bed apart, and I pulled him out. Fudge cried, kicking. If you do that to me again, I'm going to chop you in little pieces. Let's not blame the bed, Mom said. Later, when we were out in the backyard, Fudge told Buzzy Sr. what happened. Those beds can be very tricky, Buzzy said. Fudge nodded. Then out of nowhere, he said, Do you snore, Buzzy? I used to snore, Buzzy said, as if Fudge's question were perfectly natural. But since I sleep alone now, I really don't know. How come you sleep alone? Because my wife died. Fudge got the serious look on his face. You could tell he was thinking hard. But after a minute, his face lit up and he said, Well, they're best friends, Fudge told her, like Pete and Jimmy, and Jimmy's going to sleep in Pete's room, right? Buzzy Sr. and Grandma looked at each other and laughed. That afternoon, the sky turned gray and it started to drizzle. The Tubmans decided to drive to Bar Harbor. That's the town where all the tourists go. It got, it, it's got hundreds of little shops selling t-shirts with sayings about Maine, like, cool as a moose in Bar Harbor or Maine, 50 miles from nowhere. Count me out, Libby said. I've got to be at work by three. Count me out, too, Sheila said. The hatchers depend on me to babysit Fudge. But Mom convinced Sheila she deserved an afternoon off. If you ask me, everyone was feeling sorry for the cootie queen just because Mouse got sick and couldn't come to Maine. Everyone but me, that is. I still felt relieved when the Tubmans left. I hope they go out for a pizza and catch a late movie, I thought. I hope they like the action in Bar Harbor so much they decide to stay for a week. They still were back when Mr. Fargo called from town asking Mom for directions to the house. That was a good sign because then, by then it was after six. 
I waited on the porch. When I saw Mr. Farger's truck, I ran down the road. His truck is really old with rust spots around the fenders. It's painted the color of bile. Not that I've ever seen bile, but last year in school, we learned about the di digestive system, and that's the way I imagine it, a thick greenish brown color. Turtle barked. It's Jimmy, I told him as I waved to Mr. Fargo in our driveway. At first, Jimmy couldn't get out of the truck. The door on his side wouldn't budge. He kicked it a couple of times, then banged it with his shoulder. Finally, it creaked open. By then, we were laughing. Turtle jumped up and tried to lick Jimmy's face. Good boy, nice doggy, Jimmy said, patting him. Turtle knows a friend when he sees one, I said. Jimmy gave me a big bear hug and we slapped hands. It was great to see him, but that didn't stop me from checking over my shoulder. I hope the Tubmans wouldn't show up now. Jimmy also took a look around. You were right, he said. You can't even see Sheila's house from here. I guess it's through those woods over there. Well, see, I began. But then Mom opened the front door and called to us. Inside, Dad had a fire going in the big stone fireplace. Fletcher stretched out on the floor with his Crayolas, illustrating chapter one of his book. Tootsie was scooting around on her toddle bike, and Grandma was reading. She put down her book to greet Mr. Fargo. Jimmy headed straight for Uncle Feather's cage. Bonjour, he said. Bonjour, Uncle Feather answered. Jimmy laughed. Good, Uncle Feather. Good, Uncle Feather. Please, Jimmy, Mom said. Don't encourage him. Once you get him going, it's hard to turn him off. Turn him off. Turn him off. See, you see what I mean, Mom asked. See what I mean? See what I mean? I motion, motioned for Jimmy to sneak away from Uncle Feather's cage. Jimmy got down on all fours and crawled across the living room up, up, out of Uncle Feather's sight. As he did, Tootsie held her arms out to Mr. Fargo. Up, she said, up. Mr. Fargo lifted her high above his head and shook her. Tootsie loved it. She has had this thing for bearded men. She'll raise her arms up and say, up, to any guy with a beard. Mom says it's because Dad used to have one, but I'm not so sure. We're going to have to teach her to be more careful. I can just see her walking down Broadway in a few years, holding out her arms to every bearded weirdo on the street. Mom took Tootsie from Mr. Fargo. Thanks for driving Jimmy all this way, Frank, she said. I know what a long trip it is. I used to come up here in the old days, Mr. Fargo said, with my ex-wife. You remember my ex-wife, don't you? Uh-oh, I thought. Hope he's not going to start in on Mrs. Fargo, because Jimmy really hates it when he does. How about something to drink, Frank? Dad asked. I was glad he could change the subject. Some fizzy water if you have it, Mr. Fargo said, coming right up. Mom smiled, but I could tell she was tense. A lot of people get tense around Mr. Fargo. I think it's because he never smiles, even when he's trying to be friendly. How about this mean weather, Mom asked. You have to have weather, whether or not, Mr. Fargo said. Jimmy groaned. That's so bad, Dad. I heard a car pull into the driveway. Oh, no, I thought. Not now. The car door slammed, and a minute later, the Tubmans came bounding up the porch, and into the house. Sheila headed straight for the fire. It's so cold and damp, she began. She stopped when she saw, saw, saw Jimmy. Oh, it's you. What's she doing here? Jimmy asked. I'll explain later, I whispered. But Sheila explained for me. I happen to live here. This happens to be my house. I thought this was your house, Jimmy said to me. Well, uh, see, I began. We share the living room and the kitchen, Sheila said. We eat breakfast and dinner together every day. Jimmy looked at me. I don't get it. It's like two houses in one, I told him. It's like they're connected. Connected, Jimmy said. Yeah, joined together, I said. I looked over at Sheila. She was enjoying this. Joined together, Jimmy said. Sheila laughed out loud. I glared at her. See, our family lives over here, I explained, pointing to our side of the house. And her family lives over there. And the living room and the kitchen are sort of in the middle. Jimmy just stood there with his mouth half open. Sheila picked Jake up and started kissing her. Isn't my dog adorable? She asked Jimmy between smooches. I thought you were afraid of dogs, Jimmy said. She is, I told him. That's not true, Sheila said. I just don't like big, smelly dogs. Turtle, who was asleep in the corner, raised his head. Attack, I told him mentally. But he didn't get my message. He just scratched himself and went back to sleep. Sheila carried Jake over to Jimmy and put her in his arms. Rubber belly, she loves that. Jimmy held Jake like a baby. She's so soft. This was too much. I was glad when Dad called. Dinner's almost ready. Pasta with Anne's special sauce. Mr. Fargo suddenly came to life and said, Better get our things inside, Jimmy. When Jimmy and his father went out to the car, Mom said, Did he say our things? He meant Jimmy's things, I told her. I hope so, Jimmy said, or Mom said, looking worried. 
But then Jimmy carried one duffel bag into the house, and Mr. Fargo carried another. I don't have much, Mr. Fargo said, just this and my art supplies. You're planning to stay with us, Mom asked. No point in trying to camp out in this weather, Mr. Fargo told her. From the look on Mom's face, I thought she might faint. There was a long, awkward silence. Finally, Dad said, you can have the sofa in here, Frank. It's the only available space left. Unless Grandma sleeps with Buzzy Senior, Fudge said. Then I can sleep in Grandma's bed, and Mr. Fargo can have the rollaway. Everyone looked at Fudge, including Mr. Fargo. Don't go to any trouble, he said. This sofa looks mighty good to me. Later, when Jimmy and I were in the bathroom getting ready for bed, he said, I'm really embarrassed about my father. Anybody can see you've already got too many people in this house. It's no big deal. I hated the McLean's house. Yeah, right. That's how come your mother almost fainted. Only because we're out of beds, I said. You think my father cares about beds? He likes to sleep on the floor. It's okay. Forget it. Jimmy spit out toothpaste. You know he's weird. He doesn't mean to me, but he is. He's not that weird. I flushed the toilet, which reminded me of my poison gas story. Look, I said. I'm embarrassed, too. I should have told you about sharing a house with the Tubmans, but I didn't find out until we got up here, and then, well, I was afraid if I told you, you wouldn't come. I probably wouldn't have, Jimmy said, but now that I'm here, it doesn't seem that bad. I was glad I wouldn't have to lie to Jimmy after all, and telling him the truth wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Still, I couldn't help wondering how he would have reacted to my story. I decided to find out. As soon as we were in bed, I said, did you hear about the poison gas? What poison gas? The poison gas in the toilets. What toilets? Some guy up here, he had poison gas in all of his toilets. What do you mean poison gas? Jimmy faced me and propped himself up on his elbow. It was this green, steamy, gurgling stuff that bubbled every time he flushed. Green, steamy, gurgling stuff? Jimmy started to laugh. It's not funny, I said. It's an environmental disaster. An environmental disaster, Jimmy said? Where'd you read that? In the National Enquirer? You don't think it's possible? Yeah, I think it's possible. If the guy ate something that didn't agree with him, Jimmy broke up laughing. Ha ha, I said, as I reached over and turned out the light. Ha ha, a voice repeated, and it wasn't Jimmy. I jumped out of bed and opened the door. Fudge was sitting on the floor right outside my room. What are you doing here, I asked. I don't know. Didn't anybody ever tell you you're not supposed to listen to private conversations? No. I picked him up and turned him upside down. I held him that way until his face turned purple. Put me down, Pete. Not until you promise me to never do that again. Okay, I promise. I didn't believe him for a second, but I put him down anyway. Now go to bed. I can't. Why not? I'm afraid of the rollaway. The rollaway can't hurt you. Yes, it can. It can mash me. So I'll sleep in there in here with you and Jimmy. No, you won't. I carried him down the hall and dropped him on the rollaway bed. Grandma and Tootsie were already asleep. Fudge listened to Grandma, who was snoring softly. No monsters tonight, he whispered, pointing to her direction. Right, I whispered back. Now go to sleep. Tuck me in, he said. I tucked him in. Now kiss me good night. I was about to drop a light on his forehead when he reached up, grabbed me around the neck, and pulled me down. Then he planted a big, wet smackaroo right in the middle of my face. Sweet dreams, Pete. And that is the end of chapter 10. All right, let's, I'm going to share my screen with you guys quickly and take a look at Friday. Remember, Friday is our catch-up day. If you guys had work that um, wasn't done yet, I sent a message to your parents this morning. Okay. Um, so let's find Friday. So our discussion question is about Go Noodle. So there's a link to Go Noodle here. I want you to click on that and find your favorite workout video. And then you're going to share the name of it and one sentence about why you like that video. Okay. And then the creative challenge today, I'm pretty excited about. The creative challenge today is an egg drop. So if you have not taken a look at this yet, we'll take a look at it together right now. So your job is to create some sort of mechanism or thing that when you drop an egg, it doesn't break. Okay. So um, let's see here. Uh, I went to. Yeah, I can just drop it in. Um, I actually have an egg here. Okay, real egg. I have chickens in my backyard, so my chickens laid this egg. Okay, 
I have a cup and I have a few paper towels. Okay. So I'm going to do one of these right now with you guys while we're on here. And I want you to say yes or no in the um, in the chat over here. Yes or no. Do you think Oh, hold on. MMM is calling me. Let's see if we can get him in here. Let's see if we can get him in here quick before I keep going. Liam M, are you with us? I can't see anything. <laughs> okay. So, um, you, taste. Know, you cannot, what's up? I can't see your screen. You shouldn't be able to. I took it off. You should be able to see like four people. Do you see four people? Do you see me and my cup? And an egg? So, what your job is today? Oh, you don't see me? Oh, hold on. Okay, hold on. Um, can you see me now? Emma says no. James, can you see me? I can see you. No, I can't see your screen. You shouldn't be. Able, you should be able to see me. It's black. What the world? Okay, hold on. I have another idea. I think that's me. Hold on. Can you see me now? Can you guys see me? Yeah. Yeah. I can see you. Never mind. Okay. I switched to my phone, so maybe that'll help. Okay, so. Finally. So, I have an egg. And I have a paper towel. And I have a cup. Now, yeah, this may not take on my idea, okay? This is my idea. So when you go to the you have to use your own idea. So that means I'm going to take one paper towel. Sure, and that is funny. Okay? So sure. Then I'm going to take my egg, and I'm going to put that in there. So paper towel, egg, cup. Now I'm going to take more paper towel. I'm going to, I have like, I think you can stop here. Let's push that over top. Yeah. When I do this, do you think my egg inside of here? I want you to put your prediction in the top. Let me know if my egg is going to prove. A couple people have my egg in here. I'm not sure. No, no. Oh, can you meet everybody? I can't hear. Yeah. Mrs. Hayes? No, Now can you hear me? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Here we go. 
So I'm going to take this outside and we're gonna drop my egg. Okay. He's gonna walk with me outside. It, I don't think it's raining right now at the moment. Let's see. No, it's not. Okay, so guys, this is my backyard. How do I flip this? Mm. Here we go. All right, so this is my porch, and I'm going to drop my egg off the porch here, and I'll show you about how high it is here in a second. <laughs> so my porch is like, I think it's 12 feet. I'm wearing slippers. <laughs> I think it's 12 feet off the ground. So I'm going to drop my egg about 12 feet, okay? Do you think it's gonna break or no? Probably. Yeah. Was that Liam M said probably? All right, here we go, ready? Three, two, one. Go splat. Uh-oh. All right, now we have to go down and see. How do I get out of here? Come on, let me see something. It There's our goat. Split. Does everybody see my goats out there in the field? <laughs> they think they're gonna eat. That's they see me. They think they're gonna eat. Miss okay. Hayes. Miss Hayes. Wait a second. They're frozen. She's frozen. Dean, did my egg break? Troy, did my egg break? Yes, your egg broke. It broke? This looks like a broken egg to you? Hold on, I can't see. Mason, does this look like a broken egg? No. No, it did not break. It's perfect. I could go cook up I couldn't right now if I wanted to. See. That's okay. So your job, your job today is to try and do an egg challenge and see if you can make an egg not break. Okay. Remember, you can't use my idea though. Okay. All right, guys. That's all I have for you today. So we. We'll connect back on Monday. If you have questions today, let me know. I hope you all have an awesome weekend. And I will talk to you all later, okay? Have a good day. Everybody. Have a good weekend. Do my, do my dropping challenge. What? Egg dropping challenge. You guys can go ahead and hang up for the day. Have a good day, everybody. Sure. Bye. Miss Hayes. What's up, buddy? Can I show you what I made about the egg? Sure. Did you already make something? Yeah. Awesome. Let me see. Absolutely. I'm going to go back inside a while, though. Miss Hayes. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, uh, I can't. Ooh, super cool. There's some cotton balls, Orbeez, then balloons. Some Orbeez. Is that what yeah. you said? Oh, that's awesome. That'll work really good. Make sure you take a video or a picture today. I want to see you um, do, do it, it, okay? Miss Hayes, I might climb. Miss Hayes, I might climb on the top of my playhouse and do it. Be perfect. All right. Bye, Miss Hayes. <laughs>